You have such beautiful Canadian manners. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that. <laughs> Absolutely. No, maybe I have friends from Canada, and they all uniformly have the most terrific manners. <laughs> well, thank you. What an interesting way to start the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, this is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I <laughs> love fast times at Ridgemont High. Love it. And uh, I would have been 10 years old when that uh, hit theaters. And we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of this film. And I I have one of the cheerleaders. One of those cheerleaders that's not getting much respect because people are throwing paper airplanes at her. Yes, I have the lovely and beautiful and talented Kelly Maroney on the phone. How you doing, Kelly? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Hello, Canada. The py- <laughs> What is it? The Python Hyena? That's quite a handle. <laughs> yes. Uh, originally, it was just DJ Python, but uh, I like it. it's That's Python good. Hyena. Well, I like African wildlife, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, I was a Cindy Carr spirit bunny in oh. past times. So you're a spirit bunny. <laughs> yeah, Cindy Carr, her name was. And she was upset because... And this is true. The kids, the real kids, wanted to call them spirit bunnies, and she threw a fit. The real person threw a fit about being a spirit bunny. And so that's where that comes from. Oh. The real thing. Mm-hmm. You mean that's from the uh, Cameron Crow book? Mm hmm. I, yeah, I can't find that. Person. I can't find that book anywhere. Is that still it's a. out of print. That's why, and I could just kick myself because I didn't save my copy. And last I heard, it was going for an exorbitant amount of money on YouTube, on, on eBay, I mean. So I'm really mad at myself that I didn't keep it. Who, whoever thought it was going to go out of print? Why? No, I didn't. I didn't, for sure. Well, why would it? You'd think they could still make money on that. I would think you'd make a lot of money on that, but it's out of print. Oh. I have no reason. I have no idea why. Well, thank goodness the Bible's not out of print. You know we, oh, we're know. In, <laughs> you know we're in trouble when they go out of print. <laughs> Nothing is safe. I guess. Well, I love Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and it's it's my favorite teen comedy. And um, I love a lot of teen comedies. I did not have a fun uh, um, high school. <laughs> high school was Nobody not. Nobody did. You know, Anybody who says they did. Is- you know, stuffing their emotions about it. <laughs> being in high school, being a teenager is so difficult. I don't know how any of us make it through. Well, That's no, I... Those movies are so popular. Yeah. I actually just, uh, uh, last year, ordered the soundtrack album for Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and I absolutely love the soundtrack album. It's a great album. A lot of the, Some of those songs did not make it into the movie, but the, it was just a... Because Cameron um, Crowe was, you know, he worked for Rolling Stone when he was a kid. That's how he got the idea to do this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, because he was a very young reporter, and... Um, he just decided to, and then they financed him, and he really went and was undercover at a high school, passing as a high school student for a year. And as a result, because of his Rolling Stone connections and, and his knowledge of music, he was able to get that kind of a soundtrack, which makes always makes the movie, you know, I think. And uh, um, so he was lucky to get that. Do you have a favorite song on the album? I don't, really. I mean, I like all of them. I remember when, after we did the movie and the soundtrack came on, I listened to it all the time. I always do that, though, with my movies. If I like the soundtrack, I listen to it all the time. It brings back memories, and it's just um, of shooting it, and it's just fun. i got to admit, uh, this whole song is not in the movie, but boy, when you... It's that um, Donna Summer song. Um, I'm trying to think what the name of it is. Something Runner. Oh, I, you, you hear it when they're in the hallway there, and, and uh, you know, the door opens and the banner breaks, and uh, you know that scene where they're... Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I, can't, I can't think of the song, but I'm, I'm sure that on, on some things they only got the rights for snippets of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's various ways that you can get rights for things, and probably, 
I'm, I'm sure that on some things the rights were held up. And there's a blooper that a lot of people, uh, I, including myself, missed, but uh, some astute people really caught it. And it's when Damone says, you've got to, you've got to, um, in order to seduce somebody in a car, you've got to play Led Zeppelin, and he names the song. And then when they show the rat and Stacy in the van, it's not the song. Exactly. It's, it's not the same song. But, um, I don't know how that happened because everybody was so um, specific and knowledgeable about music, but for some reason that happened. <laughs> I don't know why. Who knows? But I got, I got to ask, uh, how, when you got the part, was it like a standard edition for you? What do you mean? Like when you got the part to play um, Cindy? Standard? Well, I don't know what you mean. Like, like did you edition. just go in and audition for the part? Oh, yes. I mean, I went in and uh, actually auditioned for Stacy. And oh. I didn't, get that, I didn't get that part, but they said, would she want to come and play the cheerleader? And I said, the cheerleader, because I was used to playing juvenile delinquents. You know, that's what I, <laughs> everything I'd done up to that point, I was a bad girl. And so for them to suggest that I play a cheerleader was, it blew my mind. But I said, yes, of course. And it was the best thing I ever did. I had to fly myself out to Los Angeles from New York and okay. put myself up. But I did it, and I'm really, it was really smart on my part to do that. Well, your partner in crime, uh, Pamela Springsteen, went on to play a juvenile delinquent when she went to sleepaway camp. <laughs> yeah, well, she's a photographer now, and she doesn't, um, she really wishes, she doesn't have any, like, she doesn't do conventions, and she doesn't respond to that anymore, because it really, it, it is very distracting for her. She's got a wonderful reputation as a photographer now, and to have that constantly brought up, she doesn't like it, so um, I respect that. Gee, I actually reached out to her, so I guess uh, she ain't going to reach out to me, huh? Probably not. I mean, anyone can change their mind at any time, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on it because she just doesn't care to have that brought up all the time. No, oh, that's too bad. Well, yeah. You, well, well. Oh well. I loved your little cheerleader rant, though. Are you? Are, do you still remember it? Oh yeah. I mean, that was actually what what that girl said. However, uh, she went to each homeroom and said it over and over and over again. We didn't do that in the movie, <laughs> but that's what she really did. And there was a, I really thought that the, I read it from the book, that, um, and I saw it in my script, the line was not included. And it said, uh, the line, it takes a lot of courage to get up here and do something you know people will make fun of. And I thought, well, that's the whole heart of the whole speech right there. And they didn't have it included. And so I said to Cameron, can I put this line back? And he was kind of surprised, and he goes, he was kind of like a Doonesbury character, and he would say, yeah, and he kind of nod his head, and he'd go, let's see, try it, see if it's happening. <laughs> and so I went, let's see if that's happening. That's what he said all the time. And Amy said it was okay, and so I did it, and it made perfect sense, and I think it really says more about the character than anything else could possibly have done it. And he had written it, he just didn't think to put it in the script it's just a, a funny thing that's why movies are collaborations no one can think of everything you have to count on each other to be watching what was it like working with amy heckerling well she didn't say much i mean in retrospect she was very young and it was her first major movie and there's so much pressure i mean a woman director but you know was just a big deal then and so uh, i i didn't really i, I mean there was a lot of things um, during that period, I didn't really realize how extraordinary it was that I was going to get to play so many well-written uh, female roles, and I didn't realize because um, the, the woman there was a female director on the soap, and so I just took it as yeah, women are directors. That's not how it was. It was a big deal, and so um, she was very very serious. Okay. But she was, you know, she was also cool. She wore an army jacket every day, <laughs> and she and Cameron seemed to get along really really well. And she's. You know, she knew what she wanted to say with the movie. Yeah, and of course, you say you auditioned for Stacy. Now, Stacy, of course, was played by Jennifer Jason Lee, who finally got an Academy Award nomination a couple of years ago. It's about time. Yeah. I have always loved Jennifer, and um, of course, she played Stacy. Of course, she had the the big nude scene. Were you uh, um, a little trepidatious about that when you p applied for the role? No. Okay. No, I you can't. I didn't think of that as an actress because, um, I, I mean, 
There's so many times when there's nudity in a script and you see the movie and they cut it out. You can't let that deter you from... I mean, of course, then once it gets down to... Uh, you, ha- you have to make sure that you're going to be respected in it. If it's gratuitous nudity-ish, you know. But in that case, I, I really honestly didn't give it a thought. Okay. I don't know if it even um, pointed out in the script. I don't remember if it even pointed out that there was going to be nudity in it or not. I don't recall that as being an issue. Yeah, well... Um... Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, of course, play a, a really... Uh, I, I like the fact they're working at the pizza place, you know, right across from the movie theater. Stuff that students can relate to, you know. Um, did you have... I, I, I know you kind of... You, you um, had your bit part there, but I was wondering if you had any interactions with Jennifer or Phoebe. Yeah, we were all there for the whole time shooting. Yeah, I mean... We were all hanging out. There was many, many times when we were waiting on shots, and there were a lot of group, um, you know, like, um, let's see, we shot day for night in the cafeteria, so we were all hanging out all day long for that. Yeah, we all got to know each other. We mostly interacted with the people we were working with, but we all knew each other. Yeah. Loved Phoebe Cates. Of course, she has that famous scene in the, the pool, which yeah. <laughs> yeah, which was actually even that that clip was used uh, in um, Joseph Gordon Levitt's film Don John uh, actually has a shot of that opening his, the film he uh, directed. It's a very famous scene. Everybody uses it. <laughs> yeah, and Phoebe, she was wonderful. Just coming out of that in slow motion, you know, very elegant. Had that very innocent smile on her face. Yeah, um, she. She made sure that none of the crew was standing around. I mean, for some reason, whenever you have to do something like that, all of a sudden the entire crew finds it a really important reason why they have to be standing there. <laughs> and she really closed the set and demanded respect for that. Although old Judge Reinhold uh, <laughs> wasn't showing any respect. Oh, I think no. He, as an actor, he really was. Oh yeah, he was. I'm talking. I'm yeah. just joking about the scene in general. Yeah, no, he really was. It's a very tough scene to shoot, and both of them had, you know, some potentially really embarrassing things to do, and they both pull it off great. Yeah, I heard Judge Reinhold did something funny just to get the reaction out of Phoebe when she opened the bathroom door. Well, I think and not only that, but I think everybody was trying to um, make everybody else comfortable and kidding around and stuff like that. I mean, I wasn't on the set. I wasn't. So I don't know, but yeah, I'm sure he did. He was really, um, he was really, really good about looking after other people on the set and be, being kind. So it doesn't surprise me. I like Judge. I wish we'd see more of him. Um, you're my second person I've had from the film on here. Last fall, I had the lovely and beautiful Amanda Wiss on here. She's awesome. I yeah. love her. She is. I love her too. Yeah. I, I had her on. She and um, uh, I'm director Tommy Hudson. We're promoting the id, and uh, I'm hoping to have her back on here to celebrate Fast Times at Ridgemont High later on this year. I'm sure you will. Yeah, oh, she's a delight. I've uh, had some interactions with her on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, yeah, very friendly. I I really liked her in the movie. I don't understand. Of course, I know it's in the script. But I often say, Judge Reinhold, why would you want to break up with this woman? <laughs> well, he was on a, He was. Uh, on one of those tragic ego trips that we sometimes go on. I mean, they they set him up perfectly to take a fall. I mean, he in the beginning his whole life is gangbusters, and then it, it, inch by inch he gets hacked to pieces <laughs> until he's like, you know, slinking around about an inch tall at the end of the movie. I mean, you know, any I guess his whole thing is pride goeth before a fall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But boy, does he ever make a a, a big win in the end, though. <laughs> yes. I actually saw that scene at the end referenced on, um, what was it, Family Guy. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. They they mentioned us. They, they, um, I think it was South Park that talks about Night of the Comet. And, um, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's the fort- that we're fortunate that we became part of a cultural, you know, narrative forever from the 80s. We didn't know that was going to happen. We just thought we were doing a movie. And, of course, you know, uh, Jeff Spicoli is 
forever in our memories. What a cool character. And Sean Penn, of course, gone on to earn two Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. And it's it's funny, you see him as Spicoli, and it's like, it's like this is a future Oscar winner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, he'd never smoked pot in his life. No, and he was just brilliant in the movie. Uh, Howard Stern had said, and I agree with him, that Spicoli should do a Spicoli movie based on what Spicoli would be now. W- wouldn't that well, be interesting? He's no interest in reprising that. He spent his whole life um, going, I am not Spicoli. So I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, I wouldn't mind seeing what Spicoli would be like today. I think everybody would. In fact, now it's, a, it's one of those things of, oh, this is the Spicoli type character in a script. I yeah. mean, that's how... I mean, that's how iconic it is become, but he's not interested. I'm, I, I can't speak for him, but I would bet my life savings that he's not going to do that. Oh, it's too bad. And, of course, uh, Ray Walston is Mr. Hand. <laughs> yeah, he's great. We, 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 there was, actually, when we did our, van, our Vanity Fair um, cover, he had just died, and so Cameron went to the back of the, the board and wrote... Um, um, his name on the on the blackboard so that he would be represented. Aloha. My name Aloha. is Mr. Yeah. Hand. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hand. And and we all like teared up when he did that because I mean, I, everybody respected him so much. It was such a huge day when he showed up. Everyone was in awe of him. And he, he played off really well with uh, Sean Penn. I love that moment where he and Sean, where he goes to uh, Spicoli's house. Yeah. And yeah, but you know what? It's interesting because there was something very genuine and very sweet about how that turned out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. it's kind of like you know, uh, there was a mutual respect, even though maybe Spicoli didn't quite grasp it. I think he saw Spicoli as being having more potential than Spicoli uh, saw himself. Absolutely. Yeah, and that marks for a great teacher. I've seen teachers like that, and they're always awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, of course, you know, you had some other really interesting people. Of course, Brian Backer, and uh, um, I'm trying to think, who who played Damone? I can't remember his name. Robert Romanus. Oh, Robert Romanus, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were wonderful in it, too, especially the little um, dating tips. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's another character that there's uh, always... uh, I, uh, um, <laughs> I just drew a blank. There's always that character in a script now, too. Yeah. The Damon character. They sort of became archetypes. Well, we always we all know who those people were. You know? Yep. Yeah, I've seen them all when I was in school, and I've been out of school for over 25 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, you just really hit on the archetypal thing of it. Yeah. Um, do you do you ever see any of the cast today? Mm-hmm. I see uh, Amanda occasionally, and um, that's really about it. I see uh, Robert Romanus every so often. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, Night of the Common. I have to bring that up because I had the beautiful and gorgeous uh, Catherine Mary Stewart on here uh, in 2015. And, um, She's one of my friends that has the most wonderful Canadian manners I was telling you about. You know what? When I get on the phone with her, I wish I had recorded this because it gave me goosebumps. I get on the phone with her I said, uh, before I started recording, I said, how long do I have you for? And she goes, how long do you want me for, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got goosebumps, <laughs> but she did a movie up here in New Brunswick uh, as well in Moncton called Reapers. So uh, I didn't know that until she had brought it up. Have you ever been up this way in the New Brunswick, Canada area? No, I haven't. I've only been to Canada. I shot um, Face Down in Toronto. Okay, but that's as far that's all the uh, Canada I've ever seen, and I'd love to see more. Oh. But I haven't had the opportunity. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, Catherine and Mary Stewart, so you're still connected with her, huh? Yes. I mean, I've, there's always a couple of people from each project I was on that I stayed friends with, lifelong friends with, and it's the greatest treasure, I think, of, of having a long career is the people that actually stay in your life. I mean, most people don't. I mean, you do the job and then you're done. But occasionally, and it's probably pretty much every 
project I was on, um, I always have one or two people that that just stayed in my life, which is fantastic. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, because you are kind of, I mean, especially if a movie uh, continues on like None of the Comet has done, or Chopping Wall, or Fast Times, that it's always going to be part of your life. And so, so, so are those people. You know, it's like you, your your family. And of course, you get the Don the cheerleader outfit again for the night of the comet. Well, that was so weird. I was like, why? You know, in New York City, I, I was always this delinquent. I just figured I was going to have a career of playing bad girls. And I get out to California, and boom, boom, I'm a cheerleader twice. And I thought, I don't understand this. You know, because we don't see each other ourselves as other people see us. I didn't understand what they were doing. Um, and then in in shopping mall too, I was a good girl. You know, a straight laced person and. Um, I just, you know, I, yours is not to reason why, you know, <laughs> you just do it, but I just, I was always struck by that, the cheerleader, huh? Yeah, was what, fun. I was going to say, what was it like to do Chopping Mall? Uh, it was really fun, we laughed a lot, it was a grueling shoot, but they didn't shut the mall down, so we had to wait for the stores to close. And we went in there and shot all night long, and then we had to have everything put back together again so the stores could open in the morning. So that was hectic, to say the least. And, of course, you've got you know, some interesting people in that. You had Russell Todd, Barbara yep. Crampton, Paul Bartell, mm-hmm. Mary Warrenov, Dick Miller. <laughs> you got any stories about them? Oh, well, I mean, Barbara and I are still friends. Russell Todd and I are doing a—we're both interviewed in a— for a book, and so we're going to, going to be signing um, some stuff at Dark Delicacies next week. So we all see each other. We had they had a, a a big screening here at the Egyptian Theater, and they showed Chopping Mall because it went into Blu-ray, and then they showed Night of the Comet because it also had gone to Blu-ray the year before. So it was a double feature, and everyone from Chopping Mall was there. It was great. You know, it's interesting because Russell Todd, of course, was in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Mm-hmm. And last year for that film's 35th anniversary, I could not find anybody <laughs> to come on my show. Oh, I'm sure he would. You should call him. I'm sure he would. You, is he on Facebook? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll have to look him up. I yeah, just remember he was a, had a hung-upside-down experience in that film. <laughs> he's a, he's a, I did, too, and um, Zero Boys, they hung me upside down, too. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I guess it was a thing back then. Um no, Russell is a very, very nice guy, and I'm sure that he would love to. Okay, I'll have to reach out to him. But, I mean, Paul Bartel, Mary Warnov, what a tremendous presence she is. I know. I, I love know. her, and Dick Miller. I mean, you got some, like, Joe Dante uh, people here. Well, you know, the thing is, is that um, because it was a Corman production, we got all those people that had worked for Roger throughout the years, and... Um, you know, it, it, it was just a phone call away, which was fantastic for Wynorski and, you know, in, in terms of getting all those people. And Mary Warnoff was also in um, in the, the Comet with oh, me. Oh, yes, that's right. She was. And then when I found that she was going to be in Chopping Mall, too. I thought, but we didn't shoot the same day, so I didn't get a chance to see her. Oh. Um, yeah, but she's, everybody, every time I um, talk to somebody, they always mention Mary. She's so well-loved. I liked her as Miss Togar in Rock and Roll High School. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves her. She's just, and, and with good reason. I was scared of her when I had this big scene with her in, in the, the Comet, and I thought, oh, my God, she's such a strong woman, and, you know, she's going to eat me alive. But she was wonderful, and she, but she there was a kindness about the way she was in the scene with me that I didn't expect her to be like that, and it was just lovely. So she has a special place in my heart. And you say you were in Zero Boys with um, uh, Russell Todd as well. No, no, Zero no? Boys. He wasn't in, in... Oh, okay. I got that listed here. Zero Boys and uh, Not of This Earth with Tracy Lords or two other films I was going to ask you about. Mm-hmm. Well, I was just a... Um, this, the Not of This Earth thing, I was minding my own business and Wynorski called me up and he said, I think it would be very funny if I put you and Tracy Lords together in matching nurses' outfits. Would that be okay? <laughs> and I was always trying to make my rent. So I said, yeah, sure. So I went down there, and, and I did that. And um, it is funny. It is funny, and people always remember that. 
But that was just like a one-day shoot, I think, maybe a two-day shoot, possibly a one-day shoot. Um, it's great. You just never know what's going to stick in people's minds. <laughs> Well, you know what? Um, before I let you go, I, I do I have a, a couple things I want to mention. Number one, sure. is there? Uh, uh, I would love to get an autographed picture. Is there a way I can go about that? Um, I have a website. It's called the official Kelly Maroney. Okay. Dot com. Um, the, not the www.officialkellymaroney, K-E-L-L-I-M-A-R-O-N-E-Y dot com. And on there, there's a gallery of uh, every kind of 8 by 10 um, and there's also Blu-rays. Um, and when you when you um, order them, they arrive signed by me. So I can so e- I can like e- a little store. It goes right through PayPal. Oh, so I can even get a a, a Fast Times at Ridgemont High signed. I don't. Yeah, you can have a yeah. You can get an eight by ten. I don't have the movie signed, oh, okay. <laughs> available on there now, but I do have several stills. Okay. You know what? I'm going to look into that. Well, thank you. Yes, I'd love to get a signed picture. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I know I know you're out on auditions, and I really hope that you get whatever parts you're going going after. If the you know if they get somebody from Fast Times at Ridgemont High, they're getting they're getting quality talent, regardless who they're getting. You're getting quality talent. That movie just was just an opener with so many great talents. I know, I know. It was. I knew from the minute I walked on the set it was something special. I, th- I thought, well, maybe it's just because it's my first time in California and everything is special to me. And, and no, I really was right. It was really a, a special um, situation. And, you know, now we're in the Library of Congress, so I wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I got two things. I'm going to get you to do a plug for my show, but before you do, okay. I was wondering if you could do the, uh, the cheerleader rant from uh, Fast Times. Do you know that off the top of your head? Kinda, only because people say it to me all the time. Let me see. Yeah, okay. Well, I got to do my feet. Well, I just want to say that we're not spirit bunnies anymore. Pamela, we always hated that name. Yeah, it was such a put down. We know you've got a lot of spirit, everybody, right? And we're going to destroy Lincoln. All right? You know, it takes a lot of courage to get up here and do something you know people will make fun of. That was yeah. wonderful. That was wonderful, and of course, Forrest Whitaker ended up destroying that football team. <laughs> yep, he's sitting behind me in the um, in that scene. Yeah, he's getting he's sharpening his claws. That poor football team, as a result of Spicoli's mischievous actions. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and he went on to win an Oscar on Jeeper Lot. Like. I hope and that happens for you. One line in the in the whole movie of Fast Times, and it was, don't fuck with it. <laughs> and that was a joke, because he never said anything. It was so scary. He never had to say anything. Yeah. So, what was the plug that you wanted me to do? Okay, I just want you to state your name. State your name and say that you were Cindy from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Okay. And say you're listening to, my show is called Python's Paradise. Okay. So you're listening. Right, to, yep. So you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. Okay. Out of New Brunswick, Canada. Oh my God! Write it down. <laughs> you're gonna have to write it down. <laughs> oh my God! Hi, this is Kelly Maroney from Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and you're listening to Python's Paradise with Gary Gilbert in New Brunswick, Canada. Yeah, you almost had okay. it. You, you got my first name wrong. But <laughs> it's not Gary. It's Greg. It's Greg. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no problem. I knew that. Okay, ready? Yep. Hi, this is Kelly Maroney from Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert in New Brunswick, Canada. <laughs> my dad's name is Gary, though, so you were close. <laughs> oh, so weird. I'm so sorry. I knew well, your name. Oh, that's, that's so okay. Weird. Well, you know what, Kelly? Thank you. I tensed up because it was so many words, I was afraid I was going to mess it up. Yeah, actually, you were great. You were great. I'm glad you liked it. I'm yeah. Happy. Well, Kelly, I'm so glad I reached out to you, and I'm I thank you, you so much for coming on here. Good luck with oh, your additions, pleasure. huh? Anything, anything else I can do? Um, just feel free to give me a call if you want more, um, you know, questions or anything. Just call me back, or you know, write to me and tell me, and then we'll do more. Sure. Okay. We're celebrating 35th anniversary of Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Kelly Maroney. 
You ta- you have yourself a great day. You too. Yep. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye.